A very good afternoon, dearly beloved. We have a very interesting topic today. Who killed Jesus? Was it Pontius Pilate or the people? Now we've got a lot of theories and dogmas and, and even liturgies pertaining to that, saying that he was handed to Pilate, Jesus was handed to Pilate to be crucified. Yes, Jesus was handed to Pilate, but Pilate did not hand down the decision of crucifixion, let alone a death sentence for Jesus. Now, let me invite you to turn with me to the book of Luke chapter 23, where in order to get Jesus to be executed under a death sentence, the chief priests, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, and the rulers of the people gathered together and framed three false allegations against Jesus that warrants a death execution. Number one, if you can see Luke chapter 23, verse 2, we have found this man subverting our nation. Number one, now subverting the nation means leading the people to undermine the authority of the ruler, who is the emperor, Caesar, and that warrants a death sentence. And number two, allegation number two, he opposes the payment of taxes to Caesar. And that was never or close to the case because Jesus himself had said time again, pay to God what belongs to him, pay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And Jesus himself took the coin out of a fish and got that coin to be paid for the tax. And number three, and claims to be Messiah, a king. Now, that was to be addressed as a provocative allegation telling that Jesus will be the political Messiah that overthrows the rulers of Jerusalem, which means the emperor himself. So three allegations were stacked up one over the other so that Pilate will have no other choice but to take these charges and immediately execute a death sentence. But Pilate was a reasonable man. In a sense, he did conduct a proper fair hearing. So what happened? G Pilate asked Jesus in verse 3, are you the king of Jews? And he said, yes, you have said so. And then Pilate immediately looked at the crowd in verse 4 and to the chief priests in the crowd and said, I find no basis for a charge against this man. His first verdict. And then number two was when Pilate heard that Jesus was a Galilean, he immediately sent Jesus to Herod's jurisdiction because Herod Antipas visited Jerusalem at that period of Passover. So he sent Jesus to be scrutinized and be judged by Herod in verse 7, as you can see. And verse 8, when Herod saw Jesus, he was hoping to see a lot of miraculous signs from Jesus and Jesus gave none. And then Pilate himself, sorry, Herod himself found nothing wrong, nothing wrong of Jesus, despite all the false vehement accusations on him. So what Pilate, what Herod did, he sent Jesus back to Pilate because he found no such, no such credence to those allegations. So what actually happened? Verse 13, Pilate called together the chief priests and the rulers of the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence. There you go, a fair judge. In your presence, and I found no basis for your charges against him. Now, this is verdict number two. Undergoing, despite scrutinizing and despite undergoing all the evidences against him, and he even said, neither has Herod found a shred of incriminating evidence against Jesus, for he has done nothing to deserve death in verse 15. And the people were so uptight. And then on that day being Passover, there was a customary uh, acquittal, not acquittal, sorry, releasing. So in verse 20, Pilate exercised releasing any inmates, criminals. So he opted to release Jesus. But the crowd said, no, we want Barabbas, crucify Jesus. Then for the third time again, Pilate asked the people, why, in verse 22, why, what crime has Jesus done? What has he committed that warrants a death sentence? And his third time, he pronounced a judgment, I found him, I found, I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. So let me just flog him and release him. But the loud shouts, of the people they demanded that Jesus be crucified and they sh their shouts prevailed. So Pilate despite the three judgments of his and nobody dared to listen, they didn't care because his judgment was judgment of law and fairness and he employed the natural justice and so did Herod. 
They will mean they may not be God fearing, but they were men of law, and they knew whatever were brought before them were all false accusation. But in verse 24 and 25, Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, who was Barabbas, and the one they asked for, and surrendered Jesus to their will. Now, people of God, did Pilate was Pilate liable for the death execution of Jesus? No. And you can find this in Matthew 27, verse 24 to 25. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water, washed his hands in front of the crowd, and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. He said, it is your responsibility. And you know what the people answered in verse 25? His blood is on us and on our children. So dear beloved, Pilate and Herod didn't kill Jesus. It was his very own people. Having known this, let us now with great humility remember the words of our Savior on the cross. His very first words, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. He loves us no matter what state of egregious crimes we have committed. He still loves us and ever forgives us in the midst of every of our wrongdoing. Even though we may be scoffers, doubters, deniers, He still loves us and His ever-forgiving grace is for all of us. God bless you.